I just looked up one time in my uh, uh, concordance, all the times the word call is in the Bible. Hundreds of times. And I really did look at every single verse. And I basically divided, there were three huge things that kept showing up with this word call. Now here's the first. We're all called to be saved. Over and over, we are called to be saved. We are not saved because we called on God. We're saved because God called us. And I know there's a lot of tension here. I don't know what religious tradition you're from. Some say, well, God just calls a few people. I'm one of those that says God calls everybody. I really do believe that. Uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but have eternal life. My favorite word in that verse is whoever. I love the word Whoever. Let me explain. My wife and my daughter share a skill. They both make great brownies. I love their brownies. I'll walk into the house. I'll smell brownies. I'll go to get a brownie. And my daughter will say, don't touch those, Dad. They're for D-group. Or my wife will say, don't get a brownie. They're for the shower. But sometimes I'll walk in and I'll smell brownies. And I'll say, who are the brownies for? And I'll hear, whoever. Oh, I love that word. And all through Scripture, you have this call of God. The Bible says he is not willing that anyone should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. Let me just show you some of the verses. Um, I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners, Jesus said. Uh, Acts 2, this promise is for you and your children and for all who the Lord will call. Uh, you have that over and over and over in the Bible. First Peter, or Second Peter, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who's called us by his own glory and goodness. So, so let me just be real honest. Um, if you haven't made a confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God's calling you. He's calling you through uh, events. He's calling you through circumstances. He's calling you through friends. He's calling you through scripture. God's going to keep calling He's relentless. He's going to call. You know, God's not going to let go on this one. He is not going to let go. He is calling you to be surrendered to Jesus Christ. He's calling you. And you got to understand that surrender to Jesus Christ is all in. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ means there's not one single square inch of your life where Jesus doesn't say, mine. See, that's the second way that word's used over and over. God calls us to be saved. And second, he calls us to be changed. He calls us to be holy. He calls us to be something before he ever calls us to do something. That's because you can't succeed in what you do if you fail in who you are. And you're a new creation of Christ and you have been enabled by the Holy Spirit to reflect the character of Christ. You and I are called to make Jesus look good. And so you have verses all through the Bible like um, 1 Corinthians 1, to the church of God in Corinth, sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy. 1 Peter 1, just as you were called to be holy, so be holy in all that you do. 1 Thessalonians 4, God didn't call you to be impure, but to live a holy life. You just can't get away from that. There's not one square inch of your life where Jesus Christ doesn't say, that is mine. Make me look good in it. Your finances, your sexuality, your job, everything. You're called to be changed. And I'm going to bore in on this a little bit because we're in a world now that kind of has a whatever attitude about Scripture and about Jesus. Like, okay, Jesus can have this part of my life, but he doesn't get to touch that part of my life. But we're called. We're called to make Jesus look good in every square inch. Um, I I like the story about this uh, middle school principal in Oregon who's brilliant because the young girls in her middle school, they were getting to that age where they started doing makeup and perfume and stuff. And they were going into the bathroom putting on lipstick and they were smooching the mirror to leave these little kissy prints on the mirror. And it was hard to clean up. So how did she handle that? 
So she gets all the middle school girls into the bathroom with the janitor. And she says, girls, now when you go and you smooch the mirror and leave your lipstick print, that's really hard to clean. Show them how hard it is to clean. So he took his squeegee and he dipped it in the toilet and he started working on the mirrors. And they didn't have any more trouble with lipstick. Okay, so the scripture says that when you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in your life. And you're now a temple of the Holy Spirit and your life belongs to God. Your body is now God's house, and there's some stuff in the house he wants out. It doesn't belong in the house anymore. You're set apart to God. That's what the word holy means, set apart. Uh, let me illustrate it. If you were to come to my house uh, and stay in my home, maybe we'd sit down for supper. Now, my kids know there's a chair I sit in most of the time, but you don't know. You're a guest, so you sit down in my chair. That's cool. I'm not going to say anything. That's low-level holiness. Uh, you might go into the den to watch the game, and you sit where I usually sit. That's kind of set apart for me, but I'm not going to fuss about it. Sit in that chair. You, you might even say, man, could I, could I take a shower? I got a, I got a bathroom with a shower. I'm the only one that uses it, but I wouldn't mind if you used it. You could, I'm, that's no big deal. Then you say, hey, I forgot my toothbrush. Could I use your toothbrush? You just crossed a line. <laughs> okay, because my toothbrush is high-level holiness. It is set apart for me. You are called by God to high-level holiness. Every inch of your life is His now. Okay? So you're called to be saved. You're called to be holy. And then, and only then, you're called to be used. You're called to partner with Christ in the adventure of bringing in his kingdom. It's the essence of discipleship. It says that Jesus went up all night to the hill to pray, and then he called to him those that would become his disciples. Remember in Antioch in Acts 13, uh, the leaders were praying, and the Holy Spirit says, Set apart Paul and Barnabas for the work to which I have called them. You're called to be saved, then you're called to be changed, and then you're called to be used. Now, why am I going into all this? Here's the thing. You're at a Christian college. What makes your education Christian? Because you go to chapel? No. Because the teacher that you have in your business class or your biology class or your accounting class goes to church somewhere. No, that doesn't make it a Christian education. It's a Christian education if while you're at ACU, you discern God's call on your life. How is God calling you to have a kingdom impact? You're not just in college to learn a career. A career is what you're paid for. A calling is what you're made for. So how are you in the classroom, in the operating room, at the bank, at the car dealership, on the coaching field or on the mission field, how are you going to represent Christ and bring the kingdom to the world? Now that's a Christian education. When you learn how to leverage what you know and the skill that you have for the kingdom of God, then you have been educated as a disciple. 